Here at the Midwest LSA Expo, and we normally avoid the year, but this one is 2016. And why is that important? That's because we have the newest of all special light sport aircraft to arrive in the marketplace. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm standing alongside the Skytrek here, as you see right here. This is from Triton Aerospace. Triton Aerospace is a Washington State company with an owner named Thomas Shea. Um, and he looks Chinese, if you will, or Asian, but he is not. He has uh, been based in America for many years. However, the airplane is fabricated at a facility he owns in China. So this is the first Chinese-made fabricated airplane uh, to arrive in the United States. It first got approval in China under what they call TDA, Type Design Approval. And that's kind of their version of the LSA approval process that happens here in the U.S. And they will be changing that name to type certificate so they conform with uh, all of the nations that use that term. But it doesn't mean type certificate like a Cessna or a Cirrus or some other airplane gets. It is an approval process still using the ASTM standards. So this airplane meets all those standards and has gone through its inspection and I was shown the special airworthiness certificate. So I know they've got this down right. This is the first airplane. We're flying in the first airplane here with the numbers uh, 398 Bravo Alpha. And uh, they are the first, this is the first one to get that approval in the United States. I think we're gonna be seeing more. I wanna tell you a little bit about the airplane and you'll understand why I think we'll see some more of these. So let's look at some human factors first. Entering the airplane, it's a low wing. Now the good news is you can't see it, it's out of camera eye there, but there is a step back there because some of us who are a little less flexible occasionally struggle to get in a low winged airplane. But with a step and use the uh, bulkhead of the, uh, the back end where the canopy meets the fuselage, that's a very sturdy component there, like a roll bar if you will. Uh, you do not want to hang on to the canopy because once it's up like this, it's not in its strongest position. But I'm going to reach forward here. The camera may not see it, but I have my hand in a handhold here. There's one on the other side as well. And on the back of the seat, uh, where you may be able to see our camera mounted, there's a very sturdy stainless steel part there that you can put all the weight you want on. So there's plenty of ways to do it. You can stand on the seat. Use those force, those places I just talked about, handholds to get in, and then sit down in the seat and slide down in. Once in, it was very comfortable. I found the seats very comfortable in flight. Um, uh, the, uh, the back cushion was quite comfortable, and that's a place I'm not always complimentary, so that says something about the way the airplane feels. And uh, the airplane uses full dual controls. There's joysticks on both sides. There's rudder pedals on both sides, and there are tow brakes on both sides. So one thing that distinguishes this airplane from ones that look similar to it is this has full nose wheel steering. Uh, they don't all. So that was a nice thing to discover about this. And as I, as I taxied out, I was kind of wondering if the people from the company back here were wondering if I was out of control. I was deliberately moving, maneuvering back and forth. You can see that. And uh, the airplane is quite responsive. The forces are a little higher, but the action was good. And your legs are strong, so that's not really an issue. Okay, so now we've headed out to the runway. By the way, we kept the, the uh, canopy cracked a little bit. As you can see, it's an all clear canopy that gives wonderful visibility. It also means that on a sunny day like this, it's gonna get warm in there, and it did. So I flew, I flew with Phil Hooker, and Phil kept his elbow outside the canopy, and he says that serves two purposes. Number one, it keeps the canopy from being way up high, but allows a lot of air in. But also, if he's got his arm out there, well, he knows he hasn't done that canopy closure yet. So it's a double technique. So we got out to the end of the runway. We did our typical, uh, this has the IS engine in it, so we did our lane A, B checks. I don't need to go into detail about that, but it's the equivalent of mag checks and so on. We did all that. Everything was the way it should be. Uh, as, de as depicted on the nice Dynon Skyview screen, which has the multiple screen views so you can see everything you need. A uh, beautiful job the Dynon folks have done for many years. Thanks to them for that. But after we'd done all those checks, run up of the engine uh, and set, set the brakes and the trim and everything that we, or took off the brakes and set the trim as we wanted, we were ready to go flying. So we taxed it out on the runway, uh, applied full power. The throttle has a a uh, small grip on the front of it, which is the friction release. And that, that release is basically a, a, a pin or a, an arm that goes down into a set of uh, geared positions. 
and you pull that back and then you can smoothly apply the throttle forward. You can just push it forward if you're having to do a go around and you don't you kind of forget to pull that little lever back, not an issue. Applied full power to it, the airplane accelerated quite briskly. It's a little heavier than um, uh, the lightest of the very light uh, LSA, so the acceleration wasn't quite as rapid, but it came up quickly, and we're suddenly approaching 40 knots, and at 45 knots, you can feel the airplane, it's ready to fly. So I eased back on the stick, and off we went. So we took off with about 10 degrees of flaps, and uh, those are depicted on the Dynon, or can be depicted on the Dynon as well as they were, with a number and a position, very handy. Got all the information we wanted. We're climbing out at about 800 feet a minute easily, and that was at about uh, 65 knots or so. Actually, I let it go up a little faster than that, so we were doing about 80 knots at one point and not climbing quite as fast, of course. Uh, but the airplane is highly controllable, and it's quite stable in pitch. Um, some LSA are faulted for being a little too sensitive in pitch, and I understand that. You can get very used to that, and it becomes not a problem at all for someone with a little experience. But let's say you're using this in a flight school where an airplane like this is bound to find some market, already has in New Zealand, according to my uh, pilot there, Phil Hooker. And uh, so a flight school is going to be one of the earliest users of this Skytrack airplane. And for that, nice to have an airplane that's not quite so sensitive in pitch. It was not. But there's another thing called control coordination or control harmony, it's sometimes called. And what that means is the amount of pressure forward and aft or right to left. And sometimes the pitch is very light and the side is very heavy. And again, you can get used to anything, but when it is that way, it's not nearly as intuitive as when those forces are similar. And of course, they're not identical, but if you move the stick to the right and if you move it forward and back and those forces are similar, you'll tend to do a smoother job right away. So a new student, I think, would benefit from that control mechanism. That's something that Tom Mache, who's an engineer uh, as well as the owner of the company, and he's put a lot of design effort into this. And that's one of the things that he has cleaned up is to make that control harmony or control coordination just that much better. Uh, we're flying uh, with the 912 IS engine. I mentioned that earlier. We do have the Duke Elise prop here on the front. Uh, and that's a very nice prop that uh, I'm quite impressed with. And the combination of the two, I mentioned to Phil Hooker in flight, I didn't notice engine RPM at all. So the, sh the engine mounts, the isolators on the engine, and the combination of how it's mounted and the prop and everything, obviously they've got this done right because I didn't notice anything. Um, in, in fact, uh, you almost had to look at the RPM gauge to know that it was running with the noise-canceling headsets and all. It was just a very pleasant airplane to be in. So now we've climbed up. We're at a couple thousand feet, and I said, let's go do some stalls. So we did that. We got lined up on a runway heading and so forth power to full back. You pull that little lever arm and then pull the power to full idle thrust. Let the airplane slow down a little bit. Raise the nose gently. Uh, got to stall at uh, in, in the 30s, I'll say. I don't remember the exact moment of stall because I'm looking outside at the horizon. Um, and when we did that, there gets to be a little wobbling, a little waffling of the airplane, but I, I held the stick back in that position, and it did not want to break, and it did not want to do anything too radical. It tells you that something's wrong, but you wouldn't feel too threatened by that at all. So I said, okay, let's do it again. We climbed back up to 2,000 again because I held the stick back and didn't try and recover. We lost some altitude. Altitude loss was not too great, uh, but because of my technique, we lost some. So we climbed back up a little bit again, and uh, this time I did the same exact thing, stick back, bleed some speed off, and then pull the nose significantly higher up. I don't know what the angle up was, pretty steep. And uh, again, even with a fairly steep angle, uh, once we got to the top, it just kind of waffled around. It did not want to break. Then I asked Phil if he would, uh, I said, you know, what do you, what do you show people that we may not have covered that I didn't do? And he wanted to show me accelerated stall, so I'm glad he did that. So again, he's using substantial power. Uh, full flaps down now, we're slow, we're at about 30, literally about 30 knots, maybe a couple of knots more than that, and go around nose high, and when the airplane gets to a stall point, it didn't fall off on either side, in fact, it just kind of, the nose sort of lowered on its own, and the wings went level, uh, just like you would want, so that's a very strong and good thing to say, especially for an airplane that might be used in a flight school setting. Uh, but anybody can appreciate those qualities, of course. So that's all good, and uh, glad to report that about this airplane. So now, um, 
once we got up there a little bit, we were uh, maneuvering around. I wanted to do some steep turns. Uh, we had the camera mounted out on the left wing, so I did them to the right first so that people could see our turn. And I was at about 60 degrees of flaps, uh, Phil observed for me. And we were using full power so that we didn't lose altitude going around. But you can see in our video, I was able to take my hands off of it. I didn't have it quite trimmed perfectly, but even hands off without trim. The airplane wanted to go around in these steeply banked circles without any problem. Then I did it the other way as well. In my experience, it's usually easier to do those steep bank maneuvers to your side of the airplane, and indeed those went a little better with a little less altitude loss. But uh, whatever loss there was was me, not the airplane. This is, a, this is a nice flying airplane, I have to admit. So we maneuvered around the airplane. Uh, again, all the factors of uh, the controls and so forth are very nice to use at 30 knots, the stick still has a good solid feel to it. That's with full flaps down. Um, you can tell a deceleration from the flaps being down, but there was, or, or acceleration when the flaps come up. But I didn't notice any real pitch change in the airplane as we changed the flaps. One thing I didn't mention earlier is how do they adjust? Well, the seat itself doesn't adjust, the pedal adjusts. On each side, if you reach under the panel, there's kind of a thing that looks about like my finger does now, a little curved handle. You pull that in the, in the, with my feet, not on the pedals, the pedals pop forward to me. They go to one of three positions. I used them in the far position, so I'm thinking that somebody really tall might have to do some extra adjustment, but I'm confident that that would be possible. And for someone very, very short, the pedals come up close to you, so it wouldn't be much of a problem that way, I think. So now we've uh, done those maneuvers. Uh, we did, uh, let me, one more thing we did was Dutch rolls. I like to do Dutch rolls. It's a coordination exercise. It's not an aerobatic maneuver for those that don't know what it is. The idea here is if, if, if my hand is the longitudinal axis of the airplane, the front to rear axis of the airplane, the idea is to do this without turning and just to sort of pivot on the longitudinal axis. That requires full use of uh, uh, and controlled use, coordinated use of the controls and uh, some airplanes I'm really, really sloppy on because they take a little more effort. This one I was a little bit sloppy on because I'm not that good at this particular airplane yet. Uh, but it was actually I could do them right away to 30 degrees or more. And that by itself is a sign that control coordination is good. So having learned those things, we came back in for a landing, got on our downwind. Uh, made our radio calls, of course, and then a beam, the touchdown point. I withdrew the power, but not all the way. I came down to about 3,000, 3,200 RPM, and then uh, came in and landed my very first touchdown. A little firmer than I would like, but absolutely safe and, and basically a pretty good landing. On a scale of 10, maybe that was a 7 or 8 or something like that. And certainly a little skill development, you'd be an 8 or 9 or 10 quickly. All right, let me talk a little bit about the airplane. All metal construction. Uh, riveted construction here that means anybody anywhere in the whole world can fix this airplane pretty much um, the baggage area uh, aft of the seats uh, you can sort of see behind the seats there uh, it's marked for 40 pounds but right here where the camera may not show it right here where my hand is maneuvering over now and there's one on both sides this is a wing locker obviously for things you won't want in flight but that'll hold uh, 22 pounds on each side now of course Weight and balance is important. One other thing I didn't mention, you got fuel tanks on each side as well. Uh, here's one fuel covering, uh, a fuel input, and there's one on the other side as well, 15 gallons per side. But you can find more about this airplane and there's surely more to learn from Triton Aerospace. Their website is iflyairplanes.com. You kind of got to love that web address, iflyairplanes.com. You'll learn more about SkyTrek as we go on and lots of other Airplanes in the affordable aviation spectrum at bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for coming along with us in the Skytrek from Triton here at the Midwest LSA Expo in Mount Vernon, Illinois.